G'day everyone, welcome to Balls and All, and we're coming to you from a place a bit down in the southwest. Where are we at, Action Man? We're dwelling up, and it's about an hour and a half away from Perth. That's right, and it's a great place to come, and as we always say, we'll get the Balls and All rolling, and uh, we're going to be talking to uh, a few of the people around here, and we've got a lot of stories. Uh, Wayne isn't with us, I think he's become a bit of a city boy, what do you think? Yeah, it could happen. Bit afraid of the bugs and stuff anyway, g'day Wayne. And... Um, we're going to be having a chat with some of the people down here. They've got a, uh, a big event happening here uh, by COM and uh, all kinds of things happening here. And uh, it's a great place to visit. If you ever make your uh, way down here, down in the southwest, it's a great place to visit, to come down. Uh, beautiful river here, great for camping, a real family event, and uh, caravanning, whatever. Now, James is here with us, and he's actually going to catch up with Ranger Ingrid. And uh, they're sitting here on the little Bibbleman Track uh, Calm office here, or a bit of information booth. Hey, James. How you going, Moose? And, yes, I am speaking with Ranger Ingrid. Uh, how you going? Yeah, good, thanks, James. How are you? Very good. Now, uh, how long have you been a ranger? Uh, I've been a ranger for about five years, but yeah. I've been with Calm for about eight. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, what initially got you started into it? Um, they needed more women, so I thought yeah. I'll apply for the job and give it my best shot. Yeah. And have you been to many places around WA, I suppose? I've been to a few, um, some in the Pilbara, some in the Kimberley, and now I'm here in Dwelling Up. Yeah. So. And how long have you been in Dwelling Up for? Just a bit over a year now, so I'm pretty used to the place. Yeah. Yeah, getting there. Yeah. Um, what are, I mean, we've been coming camping here, me and Moose and the gang, for about eight years on and off, having a lot of fun. What are some of the main attractions in Dwelling Up? The main attraction would probably be the Murray River, which yeah. runs on the edge of town, and people come here basically to recreate, so it's mainly water-based activities. Yeah. So canoeing, swimming, fishing, yeah. and it's pretty big. And whitewater rafting's huge in winter Is as it? well. Yeah, also, um, do they have, that, I think, the Rally Australia comes through here as well? They do, yeah, that comes through in November each year, so yeah. that's another big event that comes right on the doorstep of Dwelling Up. Yeah, that's awesome. About the events and stuff like that, there's a, a cycling event on today? Um, today is Tri Trails Day, so yeah. it's um, you've got a choice of either going for a bike ride or a walk, and um, most of them, well, they're all free, yeah. and uh, they're guided activities, so yeah. you can take your pick, basically. Now, with the trail, uh, Moose actually pointed out to me, the Bib Bibbleman track actually comes down here, does it? It does, yeah. The Bibbleman track runs from Kalamunda to Albany, and a large section of it does go through Dwelling Up. Yeah. So it's a pretty popular section, given that we're so close to Perth. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we actually manage seven huts within the Del Dwelling Up district. So, yeah. yeah, so it's pretty popular. Yeah, that's awesome. And, um, yeah, with the walks and stuff, there's, I mean, there's heaps of uh, scenery around here. Um, uh, how much does it cost for someone to come down here and camp down near the river? Um, it's pretty good value, we think. Um, they can come and camp in the Lane Pool Reserve for $10 a night for one to two adults, yeah. and it's $5.50 for any extras, yeah. $2 for school-aged children up to 16. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty cheap, and all the facilities are clean, and the river's great, so there's plenty to do. Yeah. And uh, what is your actual role down here? Well, our role varies, but mainly we manage the people. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, I guess I likened it a bit to farming, yeah. um, except for the people of the livestock, if you like. Yeah. So we manage people yeah. and their impact on the environment. Yeah. And um, like, uh, we, like I said, we've been coming here for a long time and some campsites get closed. Is that for uh, regrowth and stuff like that? That is for regrowth. It just takes the pressure off the, the river environment. If we can get people to camp in designated camping areas, it, it takes the pressure off the other areas and, and keeps it nicer for the future generations. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for doing your job down here. It's, uh, it's a great place to come and camp and uh, everyone should come down. It's only, yeah, like you said, five or ten bucks a, a night and it's good fun. Okay, now um, can anyone light fires down here as well while they're camping? They can have a fire, providing it's not a total fire ban period, which yeah. it is at the moment, and it has actually been extended this year. Yeah. Um, it normally ends mid-March, mm. but because we haven't had any rain, uh, yeah. the Murray Shire have extended the fire ban. So it is in keeping with the local yeah. shires, and it's expected to be lifted at the end of the month. But people can use gas, so they can bring their own gas and cook okay. with gas. Yeah, is that for the obvious uh, reason that the trees are obviously very dry and uh, one spark can that's create a big it. bushfire? Exactly, yep, that's it. It doesn't take much for a, a fire. And also we've got a lot of pines in the area, so um, pines can burn un under yeah. the ground very quickly and then yeah. over a number of days it can turn into a yeah. big fire. So, When does the uh, fire ban usually end? Usually um, 
mid-March. However, this year it has been extended. So if it rains within the next few weeks, it could well be lifted. Right. Yeah. No worries. Well, I suppose we'd like to thank the uh, volunteer fire brigade because they do a great job everywhere um, for events like when stuff bad happens. And uh, i got a uh, motocross bike. Am I allowed to bring it down and ride it? Um, if it's registered, um, then that's not a problem, yeah. um, but all road rules do apply. Yeah. So if, um, just because it's registered doesn't mean that you've got a licence to ride it wherever you please yeah. and you still have to liaise with us yeah. and we'll put you on the right track. Yeah. Um, the main reason for that is just to stop the, pr the spread of dieback, basically, yeah. within the Jarrah Forest. Yeah. Um, but there are designated off-road vehicle usage areas yeah. and um, people need to contact the local transport department for that. Okay. Um, when you mean registered, um, is it like a road registered, like the road trail vehicles, or can the um, you get an off-road licence? Is that okay? Um, well, off-road vehicles aren't permitted in any national park or okay. reserve, so registered on road. Yeah. Um, if they're not registered, then yeah, they're not permitted. Yeah. No worries. Well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I'm going to send you a story I did a uh, week ago at uh, the Belmont for music, so take a look at this. Hello, I'm James from Balls and All, and I'm down here at the uh, Foster Park, which is uh, tonight's gig is put on by the City of Belmont. I'm speaking to Ron, how are you going? Mate? I'm going well. Yeah, this is a workshop that's put on by the City of Belmont News Services. Part of this workshop is to try to create young people to come together and be able to play together as a band, which in the process creates a lot of teamwork skills and a lot of you know music abilities. And some of these young people, they do have a lot of music abilities, and you get young people at home where they kind of play the guitars and stuff like that, and they never have the opportunity to play in a band. So what we've thought about is creating a workshop with the Oz Rock Music Academy, and part of that workshop is trying to get these young people together and be able to play music as a band, be able to play together and jam like a band should be. The workshop lasts for about a series of six workshops over a long period of time and at the moment these young people are just finishing the workshop. This is the last workshop today and part of this workshop is also to get the young people to play in a, in a concert. We're having a, uh, a youth fest at um, the uh, skate park down here at, at, uh, at the end of Abernathy Road. When's that on? This is on the 7th of April. Um, within this festival we're having a BMX competition as well as having the young, the young band here play and um, having a couple of break dances as well. And that happens on this, uh, the 7th of April at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right. That's awesome, mate. Um, you said it gets the young kids together. How many kids roughly do you have in a workshop? Well, at the moment we get, we started out with 15, but we maintain a number about 13. So these young people that are here today, they maintain their involvement throughout the whole program. Only two dropped out, so that, that's, that's pretty good. And how often do they come and practice together? Well, we were running the workshops every Tuesday night from 6.30 to about 8.30. So, yeah, they've been going on for about six weeks now. Now, you said uh, tonight's actually the end of a workshop. When does the next one start? Because there might be some kids out there who think, oh, I wouldn't mind coming down and trying it myself. Well, we're thinking about running another workshop later on during the year. And um, basically what we do, we send out a newsletter to most of the people within the community outlining what activities are going on at the City of Belmont Youth Services. So basically we'll probably get that information out to people. Awesome. And what is your role here, Ron? My role is this, I'm a youth worker and with the City of Belmont. And my role is basically to provide programs and provide uh, information and resources for young people within the area. I think it's really great it's doing it. Like, uh, it's good they're building skate parks and stuff now. Just keep kids off the street, keeps them interested in other things, really. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, local government has done a lot of initiatives within the, within the metropolitan area in Perth by providing skate park facilities and, you know, just basically providing different rec rec recreational activities for young people. Yeah, because there's not really that much out there. Well, when I was growing up, you skate on the road, get done by the cults for doing stuff, whatever. Now it's great. There's a park to go to, and you're doing stuff here for, for the kids to come and play uh, guitars and drums and all the instruments, and it's really awesome. Someone out there might be interested in coming down and joining the work, uh, the group. Is there a phone number they can call? Yep, the phone number to call is... 9479-4420, ask for myself, Ron, or anyone else in the youth co-op, and we can provide you with the information or uh, resources that you may need at the time, okay? That's awesome, Ron. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope it all goes well for you, mate. Thank you very much. Okay, now I'm going to talk to some of the young fellows who uh, play the instruments. Danny, your name is? I'm Patrick. Yeah. Uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel. Marcelo. Michael. Mark. Ben. George. Mark. Adam! Damn, a long line of people to talk to. Now, you play the bass guitar. How have you been finding it, mate? Easy. 
Yeah. You uh, played most before here, or? Oh, I've only been playing five weeks. Really? Yeah. Huh. Doing better than me, mate. Right? And uh, you're going to come back if there is another workshop? Definitely. Awesome. What about you, mate? What kind of instrument do you play? Uh, I just do a little bit of vocalist. Oh, right. That's about it, yeah. yeah. Anything uh, good? Uh, not really, just whatever we've been playing here. Just having fun, eh? Yeah, pretty much. No worries, mate. What about you, mate? What do you play? I play the guitar. Yeah. It's pretty good. How long have you been playing that? Oh, a couple of years. Really? Yeah. yeah. You enjoy it? Hell yeah. Yeah. It's good fun. Not uh, been a band later on? Already am we one. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah. To What's the name, mate? <laughs> uh, we don't have one at the moment. Oh, all right. So working on that. Oh, when it's huge, mate. Make sure you come and see me, balls and all. I'll yeah. give you another plug and no be right in there, mate. No worries. No worries, mate. What about you, mate? What do you play? Yeah, six string guitar. Yeah. Yep. Is that hard? Uh, it's, yeah, some of it. Yeah. How long have you been playing it? Oh, uh, like about eight months, twelve months, some. Yeah. yeah. And you're having a lot of fun with it, mate. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty like yeah, pretty fun shit. Yeah. What about you, mate? Bass guitarist? Yeah. Been playing along? No, nah, two years. Yeah. Having a lot of fun with it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Want to say good day to anyone watching? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I haven't got any friends. Oh. <laughs> Can't help you there, mate. Uh, what about you, mate? What do you play? You I'm Michael. I play guitar. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing for about five years. So yeah. So you can play some wicked tunes or what? Uh, every now and then, yeah, probably. You got that warning down or what by uh, Green Day? Yeah, just now. I just got it. Yeah, just now. Yeah. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. <laughs> what are you, mate? Ah, uh, solo. Um, and I played the drums and I've been playing it for three years. Yeah. yeah. Is the drums hard to play? No, oh, no, they're pretty easy. You just get it, get along with it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, mate. I'll have to give that one a go. What about you, mate? I'm um, guitar. Yeah. yeah. Been playing along? No. Yeah. <laughs> Want to say good day to anyone watching, mate? You don't even want to say hello to anyone. No. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> what about you, buddy? I play bass guitar. Yeah. There's a lot of bass guitars here, isn't there? Yeah, I've been playing for about a year. Yeah, it's all right. And uh, you're having a lot of fun with it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. No worries. And lucky last in the line. What do you play, mate? I play guitar. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of damn guitars here, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you play anything good lately? Oh, no. What do you mean? Any tunes that you can name it? Just a couple of Metallica, Limp Biscuit. That's yeah. about it. Go the Biscuit, eh? Yeah. All right, no worries, boys. Well, take Thanks it easy. Thanks a lot, James and uh, Ranger Ingrid. And uh, Ranger Stacy's on holidays at the moment. We're just joking about that. Here we are at Dwelling Up, as we said. And I'm standing outside the Dwelling Up History and Visitor Information Center. And I'm standing next to my buddy here, the Sleeper Cutter. Uh, someone's put this together. He's actually signed it. I can't read it. It's Mill, Millen, Macmillan, C. Macmillan, I think, or B. Macmillan. Made this in 99. And uh, we got a lot more. We're soon going to go inside and show you what goes on inside the information center. But first, we're going to be taking a break. Welcome back everyone. Now we're going to wander inside the information center as I said. We've got a lot of people here today because they're having the free uh, walk around the place and uh, bikes or walking and showing you a lot of the scenes around. So we're just coming into the information center. There's all kinds of wonderful things here like these uh, beautiful toad stools. It's also a stool and uh, all kinds of glassware and all kinds of things in here. And we're going to see if we can catch up with uh, Susan, who's the manager here, there's quite a few people there, and uh, just show you a little bit about w around the place here, if I don't fall over everything, so probably we're walking backwards, and uh, we're just going to catch up with Susan, she's just with some people at the moment, in the meantime we'll show you a little bit about uh, some of the stuff that's here, made from the beautiful wood from around the area, there's all, all kinds of crafts here in the uh, information center, and uh, up here we've actually got the the manager and her uh, helper here, Diane. Hi Diane, how are you? Hello, very well, thank you. How's everything in Dwelling Up? Oh, it's very fine, very fine. Crisp in the mornings, but right. very nice. It certainly has been. And Susan, hi Susan, how are you? Hi, very well, thank you. Now tell us a bit about uh, Dwelling Up, if you can, Susan. 
It's running up to the great, um, a great outdoor recreation area. It's a small town and we're surrounded by state forest. So we've got camping, swimming, fishing, you name it, bushwalking, mountain bike wide, riding. Winter times we've got white water rafting, summertime we've got canoeing, so you name it, we can just about accommodate for it. Now does the river actually flow like all year round or does it kind of stop sometimes or how does that go? It basically flows all year round. They're still canoeing at the moment. At this time of the year though the water levels can get a bit low due to the lack of rain. So yeah, all year round water. And other events that happen in town uh, do, during the year? Uh, James spoke uh, recently, just a little while ago, with Ranger Ingrid about the uh, the bikes and all that. And uh, what, what other kind of events happen in town? Every February, every, every February we have the Log Chop, Log Chop Day, running up Log Chop Day, which is a huge town event. And this whole street's cut off for it, and they have Log Chop Championship competitions in. April, every April we have the giant pumpkin competition. That's actually the 17th or something, isn't it? The 7th of April. Yeah, 7th of April is the giant pumpkin. When this goes there, that'll be this week, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that'll be on. That's always held up at the school and the pumpkins are absolutely huge and it's also always a great fun family day, yeah. Now, the, uh, the uh, items in the shop here, are they all mainly from just local people? We try and keep all our craft supplies um, as local as possible. What we can't get locally, locally we go regional, and if, ne if necessary, we will go without the region, but mostly regional, within the region, within the Peel region. Now, what would probably be uh, like the most popular item you'd have in the store here? Anything that's made of timber. Jar and she oak. <laughs> it's a timber town, so it's generally, generally the timber products most popular. And you guys are open here more or less all the time or obviously uh, like nine to five weekdays and whatever and Saturday and Sunday? We're open ten to five seven days a week. Okay. Yeah so. And at the moment you're running these uh, the walks and uh, riding uh, trails? Yes today we're launching our Federation Walk Trails project so we're launching guided tours, walk trails throughout the area and there's mountain bike tours as well this afternoon here. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants to find out about events that are going on down in Dwelling, can they actually ring you here? Uh, say if someone from the metro area want to come down, bring the family down, have a look around, they can find out what's happening by co contacting you here? They most certainly can. They just need to call us on 95381108 and we'll answer any questions we can. And uh, is there also like a, an email or a web page or anything? There is an email address. It's uh, no, unfortunately it's not. We don't have a web page as yet, so it's just a straight email address, which is dhvic at wn.com.au. Okay. Well, there you go. If you want to come down and have a bit of a look around and uh, make sure you come into the tourist centre here and find out what's going on, uh, give them a call here, and I'm sure Susan or Diane will be real happy to help you out. And uh, it's a great place to visit, just looking around the shop, much less so. And we're st we still got the best to go down near the river. Okay, well... Um, as we mentioned, Wayne's not here, but he did do a story recently, and let's go and have a look at that, where he went down and did what he does best, a bit of basketball. Hey, well, check this out. My name is Wayne, and we're doing this thing for balls and all, and we're down here at the Maury Recreation Center for a great grand final between the Blazers, who are currently coming here and racked up the league, doing astonishingly well, a uh, 9-1 record, uh, playing against the perennial champions, and uh, i got to get their name, because I don't know. James, come here, James. James won't come on camera because he just finished sweating. You know why? Because he was doing weights. But anyway, let me see the name of this team, the Highlighters. Now, uh, currently right now, uh, it's uh, a bit of a contest. I think both teams are woken up and they're playing really well. So we'll see how it goes. All right, now I'm here with my, uh, one of my uh, superstar friends, uh, young Joe. Now, how you doing, Joe? Uh, I'm okay. I'm a little bit nervous about the interview. Uh, I think you'll be all right, man. As long as you took that Valium before the interview, you'll be okay. <laughs> but that's another story. Now, um, now, if you could tell us a little bit about that game-winning shot you hit on Thursday. Oh, uh, there wasn't that much to it. I just wanted to shoot the ball at the end, and my teammates trusted me to give it to me, and I, I just hit the shot. Oh, that's excellent. Now, was that a two- or three-pointer? Oh, it was a three. I've actually received a little bit of static about that because someone thinks that uh should have not shot in the three and driven it to the bucket. Oh, okay. Now, would that person be the silent assassin? Come on over here, silent assassin. Man, we could have fun at that point in time. <laughs> we, got the, we got the silent assassin over here. How you doing? I'm good, Wayne. Now, um, it feels kind of funny on uh, game day here, this grand final night, and not seeing you two guys in the grand final. Now, um, what are you guys doing to get ready for next season? 
Um, drinking lots. <laughs> okay, I don't know if we can say that. Yeah, cut that one. Cut that. <laughs> and, uh, and what else? Uh, a, lot, a lot of practice. A lot of practice. Now, now um, can you show us, Joe, your uh, jump shot? Can you get in close and just show us your jump shot? Let me see what you got. Uh, a little jump shot from the little baseline there. That's not my shot, but I'm going to tell you ahead of time. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see if you can work on it. All right, all right. Now, see, that guy's got form. That, that guy's got form. Now, um, what's next up for you, Joe? What do you got next? Joe, you might have to look in the camera. Maybe, There's the camera. Maybe a 360 <laughs> reverse well slam for you. Okay. Dude, no, that's, but that's no, not, good. not tonight because I've got a slight Achilles strain. And, uh, yeah, Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to sound like Allen Iverson. My back, my <laughs> neck, my foot. But, uh, <laughs> but thanks a lot there. And Silent Assassin, uh, when's the last time you dunked over three people and laughed? Um, oh, just last week, I think it was. Yeah. Actually, it was when he was asleep. Then... <laughs> <laughs> no, nice of us. <laughs> should only be two because one of them was him. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, do you guys have any tips for any young players that want to learn the game? Young players want to learn the game. Um, I don't know. Just practice as much as you can. What was that? You're going to say don't be a ball hog. Right. <laughs> practice as much as you can and stay out of the pub. Is that right? And, uh, hey, I didn't get in the pub now. That's my man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot, guys, and do have a nice evening. Yeah, will do. Thanks, mate. Oh, now, thank you. Thank you for hooking me up. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to beat me up oh, later. I right, got it. Now, that's a bounce pass for a layup. So some of you younger players, just look at that. Remember, teamwork in a team sport always will win out. A great team will always beat um, great players. Thank you. Well, that's it, sports fans. Uh, we always try to do something just to let y'all know we're doing something for the ladies as well. We just covered the ladies' A-grade final with the Blazers coming out victorious, 28 to 18. Um, they played well. At one point, they had a 20 to 1 lead, only to see the normally perennial champions' uh, highlighters come back and make a good game of it. In the uh, final period, um, the highlighters held the Blazers scoreless. In the first period, the uh, Blazers held the highlighters scoreless. So it was definitely two different games. Look at that basketball going in. It's just basketball in the air. Oh, my God, that's incredible. And we couldn't even get that guy on camera. So, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, ladies, email us if you get a chance, you know. Um, and uh, you can leave phone numbers for James and Action Man. And, uh, but just email us, and uh, we'll get your sport on telly. Thanks a lot, and have a good evening. That was a great story there by Wayne. And uh, as you can see, we're outside the Leaf right now, and Dwelling Up is called. It's the uh, Forest Centre. Um, we're going to go inside, have a uh, walk through it, and have a good look at it. But uh, before we do that, we're going to go to a break. So stay tuned for more. Welcome back from the break, everybody. Uh, we're inside the leaf right now, and we're just going to check out what's going on. So follow me, and we'll have a look. It's coming through. It looks like we've got some people uh, working on some stuff here. And uh, how you going, mate? Uh, what's, your, what's your name? Tomo. Yeah. And uh, what goes on here, mate? Uh, it's basically a diploma of arts, in, um, and you major in fine furniture or furniture design. Yeah. And um, it's a two-year course, yeah. and you start off... Um, most people come in here fairly cold, they haven't done much uh, timber work before. Oh really? And so you learn the basics from the start and in the end you come out as a furniture designer and maker. Awesome, is that like an apprenticeship kind of deal or...? Uh, no, it's not, it's a TAFE approved course. Okay. It's, um, it's not really uh, an apprenticeship as such, it's just a diploma in arts. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, what are you actually working on here? I'm uh, making some little, uh, some boxes for like a lounge room, you can, I'm making three of them and you can put them all together, use them as a coffee table or a right. side stand or yeah. magazine shelves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something, something different anyway. Yeah. And uh, how long have you actually been in it now? Uh, this is my second year. Yeah. Yep, so I've got about, what, eight months to go, something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, at the end of the year we have a, the graduating students have a exhibition in Perth. Yep. And display all the stuff we've made yep. for the uh, two years basically. Yeah. Yeah. And are you a local down here? Or? Um, well, I've been here for a year or so now. Mm -hmm. Most students sort of uh, live in Dwelling Up while they do the course. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit of a community sort yeah. of thing. 
That's pretty cool. Like um, we were just down there in uh, uh, the museum, and uh, we seen the picture of the lease. So we thought we'd come down and have a look. It's just unbelievable inside here, isn't it? Yeah, it's an interesting building, isn't it? Like yeah. it's pretty different. How long's it been up? Do you know? Uh, about eight years now. I think it's been okay. going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So quite a while. Yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Now, when you've actually completed the course, does that make you like a qualified tradesman? Uh, it makes you basically. Well, it's a furn you're a furniture designer and maker, so it's a. Uh, you can get jobs in uh, the cabinet industry and things like that, That's but great. most blokes, uh, really, I think they aim to go out and work for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your plan when you're finished? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Awesome, mate. Thanks for talking to me. Wish Good you best of luck. See you later. No worries. Well, we're going to go and talk to some other people now. Just go. How you going, mate? What's your name? Uh, Mike's my name. Yeah. And your name, mate? Corey. Corey. Cool. Uh, what are you fellas working on here, Mike? Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm doing some underside detail work on my table here. Yeah. Uh, the project required a design to be light in uh, use of uh, a torsion box principle. And what I've done here, I've put some box beams down the centres, mm -hmm. put some spars and ribbing inside it to give it the support. Yeah. But the benefit is it's really lightweight and really strong yeah. over a traditional solid wood yeah. table. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. Mm -hmm. But learning as you go, yeah. finding out some things are not working, some are. Yeah. It's all, all good fun, but... Yeah. And how long have you been doing the course? Uh, I'm the same as Tomo. We've yeah. been here a year and we're into our second year now. Yeah. So after this year, the same again, we've got to go find some work. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping to get getting some work for ourselves and be self-employed, but whether or not that happens straight away, we don't know. Yeah. We might just slowly work into it. Yeah. And uh, what made you take up the course? Uh, well, I got pretty bored. I was in a bit of a, a career change and yeah. I wanted somewhere where I could do some work that gives me a bit of satisfaction. Yeah. And this is one of the places that can give it to us. Yeah. So, so looking forward to it. Yeah. What about you, Corey? Uh, how long have you been in here, mate? Well, I'm, I'm a first year student. Yeah. I've been here about six weeks so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Loving it. And what made you take it up? Oh, um, I'm just out of high school, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, day. yeah, I, I excelled in my woodwork at mm -hmm. school, so I thought it was um, a good way to keep the ball rolling. Yeah. And uh, what are your future plans? Um, wouldn't mind once I um, get out of here, um, finish my two years. Wouldn't mind going into the industry, fine wood industry. Yeah, yeah hanging down here south. Yeah. That's great down here. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, is there anything here you could show us that you've made or you're working on at the moment? Um, I've I've um, been working on a stool, yeah. so it's over the other side of the room. But yeah. yeah. Right. Well, uh, we'll go over and have a look at this. Just Follow me. Yeah, I just want to show you, James, that I've been working here now for about five seconds. Yeah. And I've uh, I've managed to make this. Oh. And uh, so I'm hoping one day to be a stick maker. Yeah, so. well, I've been working here 10 seconds and I've actually uh, I've made this uh, fine piece of article. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's go look well, at the stool, eh? Yeah. I, I can even make them with things like that. <laughs> what about, what about uh, things like this, though, Moose? You know, the, uh, no, no, the rectangle shape? That's about, that's about 10 minutes work, isn't it? Second year stuff. Oh, second year, yeah. yeah did, you, did you use the iron as well? Flatten them down because they come normally in a dowel shape. <laughs> All right. What you do is iron them. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. If you uh, need one of those made, give us a call. Balls yeah. Here on Balls and All, we can do anything. Uh, follow me, cameraman. Going to go have a look, Corey Still, come this way. Come on, come on, come on. Over this way. Just waiting on Action Man to catch up. You know, he's a slow cameraman. He's got that wristband on today. And, uh, yeah, this is the project, is it? Yep, yep, this has um, been going for a week so far, and um, I'm a, I'm, I've just finished um, cutting my mortises, and um, pretty much I've, all I've been doing is um, just cutting my mortises mm -hmm. and my tenons and getting it ready. Yeah. And so pretty much it'll, it'll be a, um, just a, sh um, a small stool just yeah. down here. Yeah. For when I'm working my bench. Yeah, oh, cool, mate. Yeah. So, um, all your tools and stuff there, like your chisels, is that what you had to buy to come and do the course, or it's all supplied? Yeah. Um, these, these are um Japanese chisels. These are the best chisels um you can yeah. get. They're um pretty expensive. It's laminated steel. Yeah. Um, high speed steel. Nice, 
nice tools, best mm -hmm. best chisels that we know of. Yeah. So is uh, this course you said you've been here six weeks and you're absolutely loving it? Is it like a great follow-on after high school? Um, oh, pretty definitely. much what you learnt there, you're starting to learn. Of course, you'll learn a lot more, and it's just a great follow-up. Yeah, definitely. It has um, a lot of common factors because we s still have our leches because um, we we do a lot of um, we're having leches on learning all, uh, all the trees, mm -hmm. learning all the yeah. um, botanical names of, of the trees and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really good marketing marketing courses. Yeah, also the seasoning in the wood and yep. stuff like that. Yep, yep. drying. Yeah. Yep. Awesome, mate. Thanks a lot for your time, Corey. Right, I had to go and catch up with Mike because he said there was something he wanted to plug. So come on, follow me. We're going. Come on, come on, come on. And Moose, Moose, hang on. Just have a look at this one. Oh, hey. Yeah, just while we're at the campsite there, uh, I made this. Just knocked hey. it up. Are you going to sit on Moose or what? <laughs> <laughs> come on, let's go. Come on, come on, follow me. All right, we're coming back around the inside. And uh, Mike, before we go, mate, uh, as we said before, there was something you wanted to plug coming up at the end of this year. All oh, right. Yeah. You don't know when, and you don't know. Uh, we we don't know where it's going to be yet. Uh, we're hoping to have a venue in Perth, probably in the CBD, yeah. and probably early December. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you get on if you ever see the show balls and all, mate. Get in contact with us, and we'll put it on. Yeah. Let everyone know. Oh, that'd be fantastic. I like that. All right, cool. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. All right, we're going to catch up with uh, some other events happening down here in Dwelling Up. Howdy. We're still walking around the leaf, and we're very intrigued by this black boy, which has started growing in 1850, as you can see. Now it goes from 1850 to 60, all the way to 1900s, and up to 1930, when Dwelling Up was actually founded. And it keeps going to 1960, when Dwelling Up had the big fire, which wiped out most of the town down here. 1970, our 1973 fire, and our 1984 fire. So it's a pretty long time around this little black boy here. So Make sure when you come uh, to the Big Leaf and Dwelling Up, you come out the back, there's a great tree walk. It's not as big as the one in Walpole, but it's still just as good. When you come down to the Dwelling Up, you can't go past the Dwelling Up Hotel. And it's the only community-owned hotel in Australia. So when you come down here, say hello to Mick and Tracy, the publicans. They might give you a free beer. Yeah, well, I think you got a bit carried away there with the, <laughs> the free beers action, man, because otherwise uh, I'd be driving down every Friday night and saying I know them. But uh, here we are, action man, at the uh, entrance to Lane Pool Reserve. And uh, would you like to guide us here, mate? Okay. We're actually staying at Tony's Bend, which on this little map here, is just here. And where we are, is the entry station, which is all the way up here, so we get to drive all the way around to get to here, so. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. There's lots of different campsites all along the way, all different names and stuff. And uh, we're actually going to go to a story right now, which I did with a friend of mine who we played gridiron with for quite a few years. He's been to America, and now he's going to Europe. So take a look at this story. Hello, I'm Jones from Bowls and All, and I'm here outside Sluggers, as I usually am. Or I'm usually inside Sluggers on a Thursday night partying, and I bumped into one of my mates, Paulie. How you going, mate? Hey, James. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Now, uh, talk to me about your uh, gridiron career. You started out, first time I met you, you were at a, a kicking comp. Um, and then uh, you didn't get into that, but then you came and joined the Broncos. You played for a couple of years. Um, and then from there you, you progressed with your kicking and uh, you went over to America. How did America go for you, mate? Oh, America was, you know, a great experience. Not only just, you know, just getting to play in another country, but going to play where, you know, American football is at its biggest is in America. And uh, yeah. played for a college there in Northern California called the Siskiyous and started a little slowly, but towards the end was playing the best I've ever played. So very happy the way it went. Yeah. And how long were you there for, Polly? I was in America for exactly five months. I went to a kicking camp in um, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where I won the longest kick and most accurate kick to the right and from there I went back to New York and then got the train over to California where I played for the college so I was up, there was a 10 game regular season over there as well and, and at the end of the regular season I had a try for XFL team LA Extreme I didn't quite get there I was very 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 close so um, hopefully get another opportunity and, and make the most of it this time yeah what happened with the XFL team Ah uh, well, I got a, a good friend of mine, Pete Hughes, who um, coached here at the Perth Giants, yeah. uh, got in touch with um, a head coach there, uh, Mr. Al Luganville, who um, Pete knew as also the coach of the Amsterdam Admirals, and I uh, said, look, you know, I've got this guy who's uh, come over from Australia, he's played for Australia, and then he, um, he's come over and playing college football here in America, and he's worth a tryout. So uh, got in touch with um, 
the, the, the special teams coach there and um, Chris Allen and then I had a tryout over two days and the first day didn't didn't go so well but the second day I of the four punters there I kicked the longest the highest and did really really well but the coach believed that I was just a little bit away at this point in time but he believed that uh, hopefully if things went right I could play professional football soon. That's really good now uh, you've been back in Australia for a couple of months, uh, months speak English James and you're actually uh, you're going away to Germany tomorrow. Yeah I um, came back to Australia on Christmas Day and um, now I'm off as of tomorrow night you know March 17, oh it's Saturday morning virtually to go and play for a team in Germany called the Hanu Hornets. Uh, again, my friend Pete uh, went to a coaches convention, put my name forward at the coaches convention, and uh, they're going to set me up with no food, no board expenses, and I'm going to be living with the coach, so I uh, won't have any excuses to miss training either. So hopefully while I'm over there, I'll get an opportunity to try out for one of the NFL Europe teams, but it's, it's important that I just play really well and hopefully I can get noticed then. Yeah, now this league, um, is there much of a stepping stone from this league like to get into NFL Europe? Or do they get scouts coming down, checking players out? I'm not too certain as to whether or not there are any scouts there, but the Coach um, Tesla D. Knox is with 34 years experience. He's an American, and actually an ex-punter himself, and he advised that uh, you know if, if I do really well and not not just simply on the field but off the field as well, and be very dedicated to what I do, that he will help me in any way to uh, further my you know progress in the sport. So it's truly really important that uh, I impress him in every way that I can and, and, and show the right work ethic and de dedication to the sport, which I I do because uh, this sport's been great to me. I've played in Italy, California, and now in Germany over the last three years. I really can't ask for any more. Yeah, I forgot to mention before, you went away a couple of years ago. You went to Italy with the Australian team. One of our players on the Broncos, John Wells, went away. Um, you did pretty good over there. You gave it a shot. There's another championship coming up this year. Will you be back in Australia for that one? Well, it all depends upon how well the Hanu Hornets go in Germany in some respects. If we have a really good season, it's going to push it up right towards the end of July, so I probably won't be available. And if we don't go so well and then we don't make playoffs and whatever, it'll give me an opportunity to hopefully try out for the team, but I'm not really thinking about playing for Australia at the moment. I just want to hopefully play really, really well while I'm in Germany and uh, you know, get an opportunity to try out for one of the big NFL Europe teams because that really is my ambition to play big professional football in NFL Europe. It's a, it's a growing league and it's a league that I believe if I continue to improve only just a little bit that hopefully I'll get an opportunity to play. The money isn't you know, in anywhere near compared to what they earn in the NFL, but just the prestige of playing professional football would be tremendous for me. Now, Paul, you're speaking about trying to get into NFL Europe. Obviously, if you get into NFL Europe, that is a great stepping stone into the big leagues of NFL, isn't it, really? Oh, NFL Europe. Last season, they had, if I'm not mistaken, 157 allocated NFL players playing in NFL Europe. You know, just to make NFL Europe is, is, is my ultimate ambition. But, of course, if, you know, you want to make it as such as and then it fell to the highest is to play in the NFL and uh, you know that would be just amazing and not to mention the amazing money you could make as well but I really am committed and, and hopefully things will work out that I get an opportunity to try it for an NFL Europe team and uh, yeah then I will get noticed hopefully to make the NFL but I've got to firstly perform very well in Germany at the Hanu Hornets. No, I really hope so too. Uh, I remember when we first met, and you've, you've just come so far. You've, you've gotten a lot better. Your kicks are getting higher and harder. You, you're almost there, Paulie. I believe if you just keep trying, you'll get there. Um, back in the start, what was the reason that made you go down and try out for kicking competition? Because like, you'd, you'd never played gridiron before. Well, I used to play Australian rules football you know, growing up and such. And then uh, I heard on the radio that there was a, a punting competition. And, uh, you know, I can kick a really good torpedo, I thought. So I went down there and... Uh, you know, really easily, you know, the, the American football is, is smaller and uh, more pointy and it's a little bit harder because it hasn't got a great sweet spot on it compared to an Aussie rules ball, but it seemed to be able to kick a torpedo really, really well and uh, was lucky enough to make the state final of the competition that year. I, I didn't do so well, but of, of course with, with Moose, he encouraged me to come down to play for the Perth Broncos and everything that I've um, done since then is because of, you know, Moose's encouragement for me to take up the sport and I'm, I'm really am grateful for that. That's awesome, Paulie. I wish you the best of luck, buddy. I'll uh, go inside now. We'll have a few brews together. I wish you the best of luck in Germany, mate. Thanks very much. And if anyone wants to play American football, get in touch with Moose and come down to the Perth Broncos especially. All right. See you, mate. All right, mate. Cool. Well, I'm going to go inside and have some fun, so see you later. Yeah, thanks, James, and uh, big congratulations to Paul Del Borello. He's, uh, he only played one season with the Perth Broncos gridiron team here, a local team in the Gridiron West League, and... Um, then he went off to uh, America, he played for a college over there, and now he's picked up by a German team. And as far as I'm concerned, I hope that uh, he becomes another great West Australian like Darren Bennett to play in the NFL. Hopefully he'll be making a few bucks. 
and uh, so good on him. All right, we're going to be taking a break. We'll be showing you a bit more about uh, the area here and the Murray River going along here and dwelling up. Welcome back everyone and uh, here we are in the Murray River. <laughs> My boots are getting wet. Yeah, and not to mention the rest of him. And uh, so here we are in the upper reaches of the Murray River and a uh, beautiful place to bring family and it's quite shallow in a lot of spots so the kiddies can play, obviously keep an eye on them. And, and uh, in the beautiful Jera Forest down here, why would you want to go to Bali or anyone else, anywhere else when we got a place like this in our own backyard? You'll also notice that the water is very smooth as well today. So. I know that is bloody cold too. Okay, well, a while back I went to a uh, place where there was a whole bunch of policemen, uh, and I've paid that fine. But uh, also, while I was uh, at this other place with a bunch of policemen, they were having an international cricket competition where they came from all over the world. And uh, as you'll see here, uh, I used a bit of my expertise to help these guys out a little bit because uh, Australia was lagging a bit at this point in, st in stage. I didn't actually see that, but have a look. Hi everybody, I'm down here in Carlisle and behind me as you can see there's a cricket game. We've done a few cricket stories lately, but to tell you what it's all about, I've got Peter Podhoff with me. Hi Peter, how are you? Hey, good Moose, how are uh, you? Tell, oh, I'm always great. Tell us what uh, today's all about. Yeah, today's the semi-finals for the third International World Police Cricket Festival. Alright, and who, who's uh, some of the countries we've had involved in this tournament? Well, we're playing today here in the semi-finals behind us is Western Australia and South Africa. On the other wicket is Barbados and Victoria. We've also had teams from Bermuda, Sussex, Lancashire, Worcester, London Metropolitan Police and Canada. Fantastic. So we've got uh, uh, teams from all over the world here playing involved in cricket. And uh, how's it going so far? We're down to the semi-finals? That's it, yeah. Today is the second last day. The two winners from today advance to the grand final tomorrow. Right. And, and uh, who, who do we look like? at this stage it's hard to say hard to say i think on this wicket here western australia may not have enough runs but it's a funny game cricket as they say another 50 would have been handy but yeah. south africa are a very very strong batting side but there's a long way to go i wonder how many cricket teams have always said that another 50 would be <laughs> handy uh, so uh what got all how did all this come about it's the third one of the World Police Cricket Festivals. About six years ago, the gentleman Graham Blomfield from Worcester Police came up with a concept of getting police officers from around the world together to play cricket. And the following year, we all travelled to Worcester. There's eight police teams from right around the world. And hey, I just got to say, did you guys get sauced while you were there? Oh, sorry. Well, we were there. We didn't. We didn't actually win a game in Worcester. Uh, we had a lot of fun, but we never won a match. But two years later, we travelled to Barbados. There was 12 teams there, and we finished third. Fantastic. So we got knocked out in the semi-finals. Fantastic. Now we're looking at being probably second or third at this stage. Yeah, Western Australia actually finished third in the preliminary on points, equal points with second, but not a higher run rate. And so we're playing South Africa, who finished second today, and the top team, Barbados, is playing Victoria, who finished fourth. Fantastic. Now, when this is uh, done, uh, planning for the next one, when does that all happen? It started two nights ago. Okay. At this stage, Antigua in the Caribbean have been granted the rights to hold the next festival, and Fantastic. that will be between two and three years' time. Fantastic. I think I'll become a policeman by then. <laughs> Sounds like it's pretty worth doing. It'll be a good trip. So uh, who's, who kind of actually gets involved in this from West Australia's point of view, in other words? Uh, probably like any police force around the world, a couple of key playmakers, people that have the time or got a commitment to do it because everyone likes to be involved but no one likes the hard yards. That's right, yeah, I know about all oh, the hands go up but when it comes to it, the hands are usually in the pocket. In the but, pocket, yes. Yeah. Now, um, this is all in aid of just camaraderie and uh, getting together and... Yeah, just getting police officers from around the world to play cricket. They like playing cricket and getting them all together. There's a lot more cricket gets talked about than police work but That's there is, right. a, is a few discussions about police work do yeah. occur. So uh, obviously the, the build bonds, see friends and it all happens and hopefully in three years time you guys will meet up again. It's, that's what's fantastic. Some people here that I you know, met five and a half years ago in Worcester and then seen them in Barbados 
nearly three years ago. They're here and we know in three years we hopefully we'll meet again in the Caribbean. Sounds fantastic. Well, good luck to you. No. Congratulations for the effort too. Thanks, Moose. No, no problem. And let's hope that uh, West Australia comes through. Well, at this stage we've got 167 on the board. They've got to get them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. I might catch up with uh, one of the players and see if I can give him a few tips or whatever because uh, <laughs> with my cricket prowess. Okay, gang. Well, we uh, caught up uh, with one of the uh, greatest cricketers of all time. But uh, he had to go to lunch, so I'm here talking to Dave Lincoln. How you going, Dave? Good on you, Moose. How you going, mate? Nice to meet you. Good. Do they call you the ledge in this as well? Uh, no, they don't, mate. They call me a lot of other things, but not that one. Do they? Def okay. No, definitely not that one. Okay. Now, as you know, I'm a proud West Australian, and I've seen you guys, you know, I was told before by uh, Peter there that basically you need about another 50 runs. Yeah. No, yeah. Facing the, the quality opposition that we're on at the moment, we're playing South Africa, and uh, they've got some pretty handy bowlers. And, but do uh, they know anything about cricket, the South Africans and Bart uh, and all these guys? They, they know quite a bit about cricket, actually. Yeah, no, they're very, very good, very good players. Uh, they, they take it very seriously, and uh, they, they gave us a good run today. We've uh, was, we've managed 167 off uh, just under 45 overs, which is it's not bad, but it's not great. You know, right. we would have liked, as I say, another 50 or so runs would have been really nice. Okay, well look. I mean, there's no one really around, just us and the bowler, right? That's right, yeah. And I just really want to kind of give you a few of my own personal tips on how to play cricket. Because, you know, I mean, Ian Brayshaw, me, I mean, it, yep. usually when you're a great cricketer, you go in the media. You yeah, know? that's exactly yeah. right. Langer, I've, I've, I have heard that about you. Yeah. yeah. I've heard so, that not about cricket. Let me just watch your form a bit, and then I'll just kind of give you a few tips. Is that all right? Yeah, no worries. Just watch a bit of bowling here, which I'll tell you about in a second. That's one of the first problems, but go ahead. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah, see one more and I'll uh, one more and you'll critique it. I'll help you out a bit. Right. Yeah, because I mean, if you use my style, you get an extra fifty easy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm always open yeah. to suggestions, boys. Yeah. Especially if it's going to help the team. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Let me just. Uh, I'll have a go here if it's all right. Yeah. Yes. I'll get you to hold this. I don't Absolutely. need. I don't need all that stuff. You won't need all the gear. No, no, no because. Uh, one of those things that's uh, pretty easy to do, you know. It's just the cords and all that stuff that's a pain in the. Uh... We'll be tangled. All right, now look. The first thing you guys are doing, wrong, you're holding the bat wrong. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. You got it way down here. You only get a little swing. That's why the ball's going close. Right. Hold it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, right? yeah. That and could, have yeah. a stand like that. Okay. So you can give it a good swing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now one other problem. I don't. I don't know him very well. Your bowler. But right. the problem is they can't even reach the. The wickets properly, right? I see, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because I mean, every time they throw it, it's kind of hitting the ground, bouncing. So. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, yeah, I'll show he's you. he's got a bit of a weak arm on him. I'll show you the trick. All right, let him let him fly, baby. See, and he's throwing it too close too. Yeah, that one that one wasn't bad actually. Yeah, that was a good shot, Moose. Yeah. I, I was a little bit um, a little bit close to the action there, and I was taking evasive action yeah. just to make yeah. sure I didn't get clocked, but. Uh, so yeah, from what I've seen, it was. I mean, there's runs there for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it went over the line, isn't that what you want to do? That's yeah. Well, that 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 line there is actually a, feed, a fielding restriction line. It means like in the first 15 overs, you have to have a certain amount of people inside that line. You can only have a certain amount outside the line in one day cricket. Oh, okay. So. But the the, uh, the line you the line that really helps is is the end line down there where the flag is. That's oh, the one. Oh, that, that what the flag's for? That's the that flag. That's called time. the boundary. The boundary. The goes across the boundary. That's boundary. worth four. Okay, so anyway, did you learn anything from that, do you think? Well, what? I'll have to see it again, once again, like like yourself, I'm you know, a bit of a perfectionist, I like to... Uh, do we have another ball here? Yeah, uh, Yeah, yeah. Potts is just going to get that one. It's important, I mean, obviously West Australia, I mean, I was going to go, I was going to ring some of the uh, Warriors and yep. show them, see how you can step into it like that? Exactly, know? yeah, I see, I see, I see how you can get a lot more uh, a yeah. lot more hip and more yeah. shoulder rotation into, yeah. into the shot, and yeah. It, the, the trees are just like that should be the boundary, you know, really. I see. I'll just show you this one more time. You reckon you put one over the, over the trees or what? Yeah, yeah, easy. If you get onto it? Easy. Just tell the guy with the bucket, watch out. Right, I... <laughs> see, I would have had that one if uh, the cord didn't. Yeah, I, no, I've seen, I seen anyway, that you've then. You've seen, seen the basic idea. I do, I do. Give me another go at it, I'll see how uh, I go. You have a, have a try now. Well, I reckon, uh, I reckon that cord's definitely your problem there. Yeah, I think, because uh, otherwise that would have been a way. Yeah. And you could have seen that plane that's gone over here, actually veered off a bit, they seen me bowling. Oh, uh, batty, batty. <laughs> you caused the plane to move. That's not a bad shot, actually, mate. 
So what is it? You go all this, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you get the dirt off the shoes, you yeah. Off the okay. boots. You reckon you reckon this is the way? Yeah, and the big swing. This Not is much it. of a baseball, but I'll give it my best shot. See? See there you go. Did you like the follow through? I'll follow, follow through. Off. And the step and the way you just stood there. Yeah, because you know it's going to be a six or whatever, yeah. so I mean, you don't, do you have to still run? Well, no, if it goes across the boundary, you don't, no, but if it, and also if it goes over on the full, you don't. Yeah. But uh, some of us have to because we're not quite sure if it's going to go. Yeah. Some of the less uh, leading lights in the bat batting industry. Cool. Well, there you good. go, another moose tip on another great sport. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, moose, no and, worries, uh, mate. We're going to tell them all at the end of this. How we won. Yeah, we won, exactly right. Easy here to uh, get a few of the sponsors on, mate, to uh, any, any much of a drama. Yeah, yeah. yeah no worries. Yeah. Oh, I just want to say thanks to the King's Hotel in Perth for sponsoring. Yeah, thanks, Kings. Thanks, Kings. Uh, we've got the Bog in Northbridge. Done a pretty good job with us. Uh, Davlac engine reconditioners. Also done, uh, helped help the boys out with a bit of gear. And uh, there's someone else. And balls and all, absolutely, oh. balls and all. Thank you very much for coming out. It was much appreciated. It was always always good to see. I actually watch your show quite a lot, and I do enjoy the uh, the comedic routines in it, uh, especially. Uh, comedic, we're very serious. This is serious. Oh, stuff. oh I'm sorry about that, <laughs> um, but especially uh, Action Man. I'm quite quite fond of Action Man. Do you? You think so? I think so. I, I, would, I was kind of hoping we could get Action Man down here today just to um, run him through. We were going to bring him, but we thought, well, you know, I can help you out, and yep. if he does it. Well, too much influx. Yeah. You know, I, I can I can understand it exactly what you mean. Too much information information overload. So you think analysis I got, paralysis. They call it. You think I got like a future here with cricket? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's amazing what people say when you put them on the camera. There are. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <Bo. laughs> Thanks, Moose. No worries, best, mate. Mike. Good on you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks to uh, all the policemen there, and uh, big thanks to Dave Lincoln, and uh, we're going to have part of that next week, uh, the second part to that story. And it's good to see the uh, all the different police forces from all over the world get together and basically have a bit of fun. Thanks, boys. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot to Ranger Ingrid for the, uh, the bit of an interview we had earlier on the show. And also check out our website. Uh, what is it? www. Uh, something something. It's on the screen. There's a lot of good information on it, and uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got that right down the tab. So it's www.something-something-something. Something, something. Something, something. Yeah. And in the next few weeks, we have a story on tree climbing. So hopefully it'll be a good story. Nice hair. Oh, cool. I just want to point out... Look at his hair. Look at Action Man's hair. Everyone picks on mine. Mine's always messy. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, we just had a great night here at uh, uh, camping at Tony's Bend. Right now, what you see behind us is Island Pool. It's a great place here. There's some people doing uh, a bit of canoeing. And uh, they, I think they just basically canoe up the river. And uh, it's just a great place for the family to come and uh, enjoy the day. Uh, now, uh, don't forget too, if you, if you see we've got a uh, few people helping us out on the show there with sponsors, so if you'd like to uh, be one of those that help us to uh, continue doing balls and all, give us a call direct on the phone number you'll see on, on the uh, screen. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway, everyone, thanks for watching. We're going to leave you with a little bit more uh, view of the area down here. Make sure you come down and ma uh, make the effort at less than an hour and a half. If you've got an old bus like ours, it might be two hours. But uh, <laughs> come right. down, have a bit of fun. Stay the night if you've got camping gear. Uh, winter time or coming up about the time this goes to air, you'll be able to light fires and have a... Have a, uh, a nice little, hopefully not a bushfire. Be careful with fires. Um, so, Action Man, anyone you want to say hi to? I can't think of anyone right now, so no. <laughs> His hairdresser. Well, big hi to everybody out there. Thank you for watching. Uh, to those people who might be sick or injured, we hope you get better soon. And those celebrating birthdays, of course, uh, uh, have one for us. I want to say hi to Justin, Dave, and Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've been very helpful too, and uh, we're going to be catch up with you next Monday night, 8.30, right here on Access 31, and the name of the show is Balls, Balls and All. All. See you next Balls week. Balls and All would like to thank the following sponsors. We are looking for more people to help us in the producing of this program so we can let others know about your sports and leisure.